here today. We're getting ready. We're getting revved up for our 21 day diligent for life prayer challenge. And so what I want to do today in this podcast, I want to come on and talk about some of the preparation uh, for the challenge, because what happens is on September 1st, we're going to be starting this. And I usually start from day one through 20 and go through 21. I don't go because I have a couple of things, some, uh, some things I introduce that we will be doing throughout the challenge. And I don't want you to be uh, basically trying to figure out what are you talking about? So I want to come on here today and, and clarify everything uh, so that we can move forward um, in the challenge. And so let's start with this. I'll start with prayer and then we'll go forward. Okay. So Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord Father God, for uh, just another day, Lord, just to be able to uh, speak about you, uh, to be in your presence, Lord Father God, for your word, Lord Father God, to resonate in our hearts, Lord, uh, make it brand new in us like never before. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen and amen. And so we are getting ready for the challenge. So September 1st is day one of the challenge. And so I wanted to give you some tools that are in my book, Rise Up and Pray. As you can go to diligentforlifeglobal.com. So diligent, the number four, life global.com and order your book today so I can ship it to you so I can mail it to you and you can join the challenge too also and so what you'll see is I'm actually going to each day I'm going to bring up the podcast for day one day two all the way to 21 days and what I'll say is if you're in a season um where you're looking for answers uh where uh you are facing some things that just never quite felt right to you but you're trying to really figure out how you can hone in on what God is calling you for, um, what season you're prepping for. Starting a a challenge for prayer, I have seen myself in several seasons of my life do this, and I've always gotten an answer. I've always gotten results, and I've seen numerous people who've been through this challenge with me, how God has stepped in, and really focus their lives and uh, clarify some things, move some crooked ways out the way, and um, um, did some things to, to, to alleviate the enemies that were in their lives and gain them the strength to move forward uh, and truly walk in their destiny and what they're called for. So I'm excited about this because I know the results are going to be mind-blowing. And all you can say at the end is, but God. <laughs> God did it, not me. God did it, right? And so... Let's go ahead and get started. So tool number one is called seclusion. And so I'm going to read some that's in the book, and then I'm going to kind of um, talk a little bit more about that. So in the book, I talk about seclusion. Find a place of seclusion where you may speak freely. I don't want you to just speak loud, but I want you to pray like it's your last breath. It is very important that you pray with passion, with aggression, and with focus. Understand why you are praying. Pray as if you're saying, I'm going to pray and I'm not going to stop until I see a move from God. So I want you to kind of think about that. This prayer challenge is for you to begin to build a true, authentic relationship with God through prayer. That will give you a posture, a strength of of you just know that you know that you know that God is going to answer your prayers, that he's going to move on your behalf. And uh, the scripture I use for this is Psalms 55, 16 through 17. What it says is, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. And so that's Psalms 55, 16 through 17. And so what I will tell you, man, when I started praying in seclusion, so uh, getting away from the noise, turning my phone over, Uh, turn the TV off, uh, just really started spending that time with God, I started realizing that I had all this noise around me. And I'll get more into that as we go into prayer more. But I started seeing I had all these distractions around me that there was no way that I could even hear my thoughts or have the time to even hear God's voice. And so, uh, which will lead us to tool number two, which is clapping of hands. So while you are praying, clap your hands together sparingly, yet powerfully. And the scripture I use for this is Ezekiel 21, 14 through 17. And it says, so then son of man, 
prophesy and strike your hands together. Let the sword strike twice, even three times. It is a sword for slaughter, a sword for great slaughter, closing in on them from every side, so that hearts may melt with fear, and the fallen be many. I have stationed the sword for slaughter at all their gates. Look, it is forced to strike like lightning. It is grass for slaughter. Slash to the right your sword, then to the left. Wherever you your blade is, turn. I too will strike my hands together and my wrath will subside. I, the Lord, have spoken. The Bible says that we are fighting principalities and power. And that's in Ephesians chapter one. Um, And it talks about how we're far above all principalities and power and might and have dominion in every name that is named. And we'll get into that later on. As you clap your hands, you send swords to cut off the enemy in your life. Also remember that God said he would strike his hands together. This is God's way of protecting his people from their enemies. And, and so when you're praying, you know, as you're praying, sometimes I'm going to tell you to clap your hands, clap your hands to the left, clap your hands to the right. And you are distract, you're distracting the enemy from hearing you. You are distorting noise. It, it's a sword in the spirit. So any principality, because in certain in every area, in every region of life, some whatever you're dealing with, whether it's financial, whether it's health, whether it's um, relationships, uh, whether it's your job, whether it's your business, you know, you have some enemies. You have some things in your life um, that are challenging to you, and you need God to come in and reinforce uh, his might uh, for his will to be done uh, through your life on earth as it is in heaven, right? You want his will to be done in your life. And so sometimes you are battling things, principalities that you're just like, God, why is this so hard? Why is this happening? And as you're praying, like I, you're speaking it. You see, I'm, I'm deploying the sword of the spirit to destroy the enemies that are sent to destroy uh, my, my business from going forward. Well, the finances from being being right in my life. You know, you're speaking against that. That's what you're talking about when you're clapping your hands, okay? See, I'm getting revved up because we're getting ready and I just know God is going to um, he's going to make an impression on you. That's going to change your life forever. So I'm excited about that for you, which leads us to tool number three. And this is saying raising and lifting up your hands. OK, raising your hands through raising your hands is a, is relevant in worshiping. It is not the only purpose of its doing so. This will also deploy God into your prayers. This is also exemplifies a sign of total submission to him. And so the scripture I did was Exodus 17, 10 through 13. And what it says is, so Joshua fought the Amaleks, Amalekites, as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever the, he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites' army with the sword, Exodus 17, 10, and 13. And what it says, as we pray, we can deploy God into our prayer as we expect the victory every time. So as you're praying, um, worshiping God, you have your hands up. You're surrendering it all to God, but you're also in your God, in your mind, you're just in your, in your prayers, you're deploying God into your atmosphere, into uh, your situation on your behalf. Okay. So what leads us to tool number four, what it says is listening, hearing, and writing, gather a pen, a notepad while in quiet place with God, wait and listen until you start to hear the things of God, write his words to you. As he speaks, this is the listening side of prayer. Uh, and this is Psalms 25, 4 through 5. And what it says is, show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me for you are God, my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. And that's Psalms 25, 4 through 5. And it says, what it says, the objective is to be in the position to hear from God in prayer. Even while you are reading, he will give you a revelation through his word and a greater sense of understanding and wisdom. And so, as you can see, I'm right here 
with my handy dandy notebook, right? And then I have my pen so I can write. And so when I pray, I'm in that I'm in that quiet place. And there's a part of prayer after you after you say the things that you're gonna say, it's good to sit and just rest in the presence of God. And the reason why you want a pen and notebook is because you start hearing things. And some people hear audible and some people hear internally. So what I want to say is sometimes what will happen is you'll hear things in your mind. Like thoughts will come clearly. You'll be like, you know, it might be something as little as, you know, the sky is white or the sky is blue, whatever. You know, whatever it is that you hear, write it down. And the more you do it, you'll begin to see God in those moments. You know, sometimes you'll have distorted thoughts. Sometimes you'll have negative thoughts. That's just the enemy trying to distract you, trying to stop you from hearing clear and and being able to understand when a God thought comes in your mind and when an enemy thought comes in your mind. And you'll begin to be able to decide that and discern that uh, through the prayer time that you spend with God and the word that you read. And so today when I was praying, I just wrote this down. I said, Lord, I thank you for another day. I'm here because of your grace and your mercy. I recognize that I have been called to touch people and help them spark them to their destiny and inspire them to, uh, to their destiny. You know, and I just wrote that. And, to, and right now, it might not mean much, right? I might not really understand why I wrote it. <clears throat> but there's been times over my life as I've been doing this, Diligent for Life Global, that didn't come from me doing research. That came from me praying. I wrote down Diligent for Life. And then later on, it was like, this is a global mission. This is something that will impact people across the world. And so that didn't just come from me trying to be creative. That came from me spending time with God. Rise Up and Pray came between prayer and a conversation that somebody was praying for with me for one of my, my, my friends who passed away, God bless her. We, we were praying on, you know, Hey God, you know, what is the name of this book going to be? I didn't, it, I couldn't think of a name and, you know, I'm asking God and I asked God. And then all of a sudden she was like, I, I heard this rise up and pray. And I was just like, wow. And so that's where rise up and pray came from. You know, that's where, uh, 21 days of feeding the warrior you came from. It came from spending time in prayer, okay? What leads me to um, tool number five, which is the Holy Spirit. The fifth tool is speaking in the Holy Spirit. Um, This is Acts 2, 1 through 4. And what it says is, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. As the Spirit enabled them, Acts 2, 1 through 4. And what it says in the book, speaking in the Holy Spirit is the perfect prayer. It is not controlled by your thoughts. It is truly the best way to enter into prayer. The Holy Spirit clears the airways and opens up direct connection with God. It builds up your spirit, man, and sharpens your gifts. I understand not all believers have experience speaking in the spirit, but please do not be dismayed. Just pray with total surrender to him and you will be heard. And so I'm going to ask in certain parts of the book for you to be able to do this, uh, spending in the Holy Spirit. And like I said, and just said, like some people, they just, they just naturally, um, they have not received the gift of the Holy Spirit yet. So that's fine. So, but you know, this, the whole thing about praying, uh, the word of God out loud, uh, you, um, writing and listening and just writing your thoughts down after you pray, spending that, that quiet time with God, lifting your hands up, clapping your hands. These are things that we all can participate in, um, and, and, and move forward in this prayer challenge. Okay. And so this is the last one, but not the least, right? And so tool number six is called declaring. And so the six tools declaring, prophesy or take possession over your family and community. Some people may, you may hear this as doing uh, daily affirmations, um, but 
same concept, but this is more spiritual because I'm decreeing and declaring things over my life. Um, I'm decreeing and declaring things over my family, over my finances, over my health, over my business, over my career, over my friends, um, over uh, I'm decre- I'm decreeing and declaring things. I'm speaking to mountains and telling them to be removed and do not doubt my heart, but believe those things that you say. So, so I'm, I'm speaking these things. I'm declaring these things. And so let's do Ezekiel 37, 7 to 10 says, so I prophesied as I was commanded and I prophesied there was a noise and behold, I, a shaking and the bones came together, bones to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breathe and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesy as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. So that's the 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 sixth and final tool that I'll be asking you to do uh, throughout this prayer challenge. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to end uh, with the last tool and I'm going to give you an example of how decreeing and declare um, decreeing and declaring um, is so powerful. And I want you to listen to this and I want you to receive it uh, for not only yourself, but your family, and whatever that thing that you're battling. And what will happen is I'll see you on tomorrow after I finished it. So I just want to go ahead. Let's, I'm going to end with this. Okay. <clears throat> so what it says is <clears throat> I prophesy over my life that as the sun rises, let favor overtake my day. Let the complete health come, let complete health come to my mind and body. Let my eyes be open to see the will of God. Let your ears be open to hear the voice of God. Let my prayers be incense to God. I decree and declare that I am stretching into God. I decree and declare that I'm walking into God. I decree and declare that my thoughts are downloaded directly from God. I decree and declare that I pray until I become prayer itself. I decree and declare that I have dominion in heaven and in earth. I decree and declare that I worship until I become worship itself. I decree and declare that I move mountains every single day. I decree and declare that my faith is increasing every single day. I decree and declare that everything I touch, it prospers. I decree and declare that I operate in boldness. I decree and declare that I operate in the heartbeat of God. I decree and declare I am a soul winner and success, success magnet. I decree and declare that whatever ground I walk on will be given to me. I decree and declare that whatever room I walk in, that I am the light of God. Let God arise and let my enemies be scattered. I decree and declare that the peace of God consumes my actions. I decree and declare that the love of God operates through my actions. I decree and declare that I have overwhelming accolades at my job or business. I decree and declare that as I flow through my day, that miracles, signs, and wonders are happening all around me. I walk in the fullness of God. I walk in the boat sinking, net breaking overflow. I decree and declare that I, whatever plot the enemy has planted will return on them. I decree and declare that their powers, their gifts, their favor will switch hands. I decree and declare that whatever Pharaoh are trying to stop the gifts of God from being in full effect in my life, I command that they are destroyed by fire. I decree and declare that any arrow shot my my way will backfire. I decree and declare that any witch or warlock trying to harm me is destroyed. I speak the water I speak to the water kingdom, the wilderness kingdom and the animal kingdom. I speak to the airways that whatever plot the enemy is using to stop to move of the move of God in my in my territory be destroyed. Lord, I command that the move of you to operate, Lord, I command that move of you to operate through my life every single day. Pluck out and uproot anything in me that is not like you. I cancel any limiting thoughts in my mind and I command complete acceleration in all that I do. I have spoken all these blessings, decrees, and declarations in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, my name is Ricardo Cordu, and I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health that your days are as sweet as honey and that your life bring you much joy and much laughter. Remember, life is love and love is life. We're on the winning side. I will see you tomorrow.
for day number one of the Rise Up and Pray prayer challenge. 